Hey everyone, we are back for another episode of Group Chat. It's on and I holding it down today. We are talking all kinds of things. One of the big topics is it's the return of the Mac. And that Mac is Zuck. Yep. And you will not believe what happened over Christmas. Unbelievable. We talk some metaverse. We talk about places to vacation. You know, we also talk about, hey, dude, we had no idea what it was. We're, we're getting a lot of shit for it on TikTok. And then we talk and end the episode on COVID, college football. And should we even talk about it anymore? It sounds like we shouldn't. Let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another episode of Group Chat. Uh, we are fresh off the holidays, and Anna and I are here holding it down. We are going to just get right into it, because we have an action-packed episode of things to talk about. The first very interesting thing, not surprising and not shocking, Google searches for Peloton are down. So Christmas came late for you, because this is the post-Christmas uh, news alert. Yes, it's a post-Christmas news alert. And, you know, Peloton stock hitting a fresh 52-week low like it's just another Christmas special. And what's interesting, this data shows. So 30% drop year over year in December. Uh, September saw 31% drop. That's just the United States. The UK showed a 40% drop. Germany showed 58% drop. Um, and so you're seeing that it's just not an American thing. And so what Peloton is coming out and saying is that, well, we expected people to kind of go back to, um, uh, you know, their normal routines post pandemic. This is not a big deal. I think it's a very big deal. Yeah. I think it's a niche product and, you know, I'm not as extreme as you are with your views on Peloton. I think your view is just based on the valuation. Like it appears to be a decent product that some people will enjoy. And that's what it is. And, and, and the other thing is, is what's clear is, you know, a lot of times when these huge, uh, large incumbents in an industry enter a category, you know, the first instinct is, Oh, they're going to come and clean house. Then over time, uh, th th whoever the up and comer is finds a place in in that world and continues to thrive. Peloton, you know, the first instant uh, when we first saw Apple Fitness Plus come out of the gate, everyone was like, "Oh, it's going to crush Peloton." And then Peloton proved that there are some people that do like the product. Now, what we're seeing is, is that Apple Fitness Plus is actually their biggest problem because it's basically free. So yep. if Peloton was going out into the world and saying, we believe our video content uh, is, is the future of our business, then they charge $13 a month. And Apple Fitness basically bundles it up with all of their other products. And in the Apple One bundle, which that's how I'm subscribed to Apple, I get the fitness classes for free. So I don't see how or why you would sign up solely just for the Peloton product. Yeah, I think, uh, I think a few things. One, um, Apple is secretly, not secretly, pretty publicly going after health in a big way. Yeah. With all, all their different products. Um, and I think that's obviously going to take a hit on all these at-home fitness products. And, you know, secondly, I'm curious how you think about it. Um, cause we both enjoy like being active and exercising. Nobody else does. I don't like tracking though. Cause I feel like it turns into a job, something that I actually enjoy. So, so I don't, I don't track my fitness because I'm like, why do I want to create the, create this into like work when I just actually enjoy getting a full sweat and like, you know, getting my heart rate up and working out. That's a rich man's comment. How's a rich man? I, I, <laughs> you have no, you have no goals. You have no nothing. You're just floating. That's a, that's, no, that's no, rich man's I, I worked out my entire life. I know when I have a good workout and I know when I have a bad workout. So, so I, I went on a run this morning in my neighborhood and 
I saw like a, a, a dude running and I was like, I know I'm faster than him. So I just picked it up. Yeah, that, that, that's not, so that's fine. I, I don't track myself running unless I'm training for something. So if I'm training for something, I'm tracking every single workout because I'm trying to gauge. Yeah, that I'm makes at. sense. Like if you're running, training for a marathon, but if you're purely exercising for the goal of just staying healthy and exercising, but you, you have, have to, the reason why you do that, you gamify it, right? Like that's what Strava and that's what Apple clubs on their, you know, and the fitness app do is like, you're basically in competition with each other. That's like playing a video game and saying, oh, I don't need any levels. I just like to play with my swords or whatever. I like to play with my guns on Call of Duty and I don't really care that if I kill anyone. Yeah, I, know. I, I, I think I'm unique in the sense that I actually just enjoy it. So I'm like, let's keep it fun. Because once you, because you can get neurotic about it, right? If you're in all these clubs and like, but you that's, Honestly, that's, that's what people need. We're, I, I was thinking about it from an investment perspective. If I was an investor, I would not invest in health and wellness. It's the dumbest category to invest in America. Because you're what? saying most people aren't healthy and well. No. And yeah. this is with information access, things becoming accessible from a price standpoint. This is... Everyone knowing what it takes to be healthy. Health and wellness is Web three. It's a fantasy. Yeah, it's a fantasy. <laughs> it's a fantasy land. Because like, if if people, dude, think about it. Obesity and mental wellness is at all time high. I mean, obesity. Mental, yeah, obesity is high and mental health is at a all time low. Yes. So that tells me, calm Peloton, sweet green, none of that shit is working. But it's this promise that they can be the solution, right? That's why they get valued so high. But yeah, yeah, I know why they get valued is because the people that write checks live in LA, San Francisco, and New York, and they use that shit because rich people care about health and wellness. Because mm -hmm. when you're at a point in life where everything else is set, then you get the luxury of worrying about health and wellness. And most middle class or poor people only worry about health and wellness when it's too fucking late. Right. And that's, and that's unfortunate. This, the reality of the situation. And I will say like anyone who's a runner or that stays active, there's nothing that replaces running outside. Like, yeah. treadmills and all this stuff. Like there's so many days where I'm like, you know what? I just want to go out and just run and yeah, not I mean, like, deal with a machine. That's like, you know, it, 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 there's a therapeutic aspect in my opinion for me running outside yeah. versus like being in like a class or a machine or something. Yeah. I mean, uh, our friend Anthony gave me a, uh, he had a, he actually got, I think the Peloton treadmill. So he had an extra treadmill. So he gave me his old treadmill and I, cause it was raining the last, you know, I, I, I like to incline walk. If I can do it. Yeah, I enjoy that too. That's a nice and one. Then, but even that, I can do like 45 minutes and I'm like bored. And it's it's a painful 45 minutes. So then the other day, it was raining, raining, raining. So I didn't get a chance to go outside, get some fresh air. So I tried to run the treadmill. And I used to run at the treadmill at the gym. Man, running on a treadmill is torture. Torture. It's just a miserable, miserable experience. So, I mean, here, my thing on Peloton is not only did I think the business is overvalued and I still continue to think it's way overvalued at $11 billion. I think what's going to happen with the business is it's probably going to get cut in half from here and it'll get acquired. Like if Apple ends up buying it, I don't think Apple will because they don't make kind of splashy acquisitions, but I could see like a Google or a Microsoft or even a Facebook uh, buy it because there is value in the brand and they all have these ambitions of, you know, VR and, you know, creating content. So it, it feels like it could be a nice fit with one of those companies or maybe even a Nike. Like, so do you know what's interesting about like kind of these whole connected health devices? Have you heard of an outlet, which is what you track like a baby newborns, like, Oh yeah. 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 And so we got one for our newborn and it wasn't connecting. So I called the help and I was like, why can't I register my device? What not? Apple banned it from the app store. Oh. And I think it was like a power move. They're like, we're going to be, you know, they, they, the help, the operator on the phone with the help desk was basically like, look, 
Apple wants us to register as a medical device under FDA rules. Yeah. And they just made it really difficult for them to register in the app store. So if we want to use this outlet for the newborn that, you know, measures breathing rate, oxygen, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, you have to go on the website. You can't download an app. And I think Apple is just basically slowly bullying people to basically be the all in one for everything health related, health data. And yeah, I mean, why not? Right. You control the, you basically control the system. So screw it. Like, Give control at all. I, yeah. I get it. I mean, I get what everyone's doing. I just think the 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 bigger thing is is around health and wellness. I just don't like. I don't see. We're not self disciplined, self aware enough as uh, people to figure this out on our own. And unless there's laws or penalties or punishments for being unhealthy, no one's going to do shit. And you can't tell anyone what to do anymore. So yeah. you basically like, and, and, and the, and the, the, the counter to that is that, um, or in addition to that is that, uh, medical technology is getting so good that you can live being unhealthy for a very long time. Yeah. So medicine, there are so many things that you can now do. You know, you have heart issues at a stent, you have, you know, diabetes, here's some insulin, you have, whatever it is, they medic, they want you to, keep getting treated. No one wants to cure this. You know, this is the discussion over COVID. Like you should all be healthy. We should all be do the, we, we're not pushing that narrative. Yeah. We're just pushing like, eh, get the vaccine, get treated, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, and that's, I think, the, that's the one thing Joe Rogan got right. Yeah. And you know, he said a lot of stuff that <laughs> we all can debate and I don't really want to debate it, but the one obvious thing that I think we all subscribe to is like, get vitamin D, be outside, go exercise, yeah. stay yeah. healthy. Keep your heart rate up. Like these are basic things. Like you know, it's very clear. Obesity is the leading cause of hospitalizations with COVID. That's like proven in data, but no one wants to talk about that. And I get it's like this crazy uh, disease that we have little data on. And sure, I know we're gonna cross a million deaths, but there are other things we can do. We just don't push, and it's become like taboo to even talk about. Yeah. And I, and I think the problem is, is like everything gets uh, like politicized or there's always two sides to everything. That's why like uh, I was going to make it my content recommendation, but uh, there's a movie that came on Netflix. It's like, you know, their holiday movie, Don't Look Up. And the reason why it's so brilliant is because there is like not, not going to ruin the movie, but basically there's an asteroid or a comet coming to Earth that's going to, uh, you know, extinct the planet yep. and because of how everything is the world couldn't get on the same page on what to do with it and right. like it's watching like you know society could potentially end but we're just going to keep arguing and fighting till you know we're no longer here and yeah I think- so I, I actually started but didn't finish it and it was fairly controversial in our own group chat yeah. uh, opinions on the movie yeah and I didn't finish it but curious what your take is because Anthony and another in our fantasy football chat said it was like a parody of America. Yeah, it's, br- it's exactly what it was. And that's why it's so brilliant. And, and it goes back to when you think about health and wellness or things that are catastrophic to the future of humanity or the future of this country. We don't, we can never get on the same page. We can't even get on the same page on that. Yes, we as a country should be healthy because then what, there's going to be a group of fat people that say, I get to eat and smoke and do whatever the hell I want. It's my, my body, my life. I want to live it this way. So it's like you're, you're never going to be on the same page because of everything has to be divided and polarized no matter what. It's like, you know, if everyone agrees this person's a bad person, there's some sickos that will come and say, nah, I'm down with this bad person. So that's just the society we live in. We're all going to be always ultra divided. So on health and wellness, we can keep pouring money into all these amazing ideas and companies, but the mindset is the first problem that no one's investing in because it's like a cultural backlash for everyone to think the same. Like, yes, we should all be healthy. No, but we don't all agree that we should be healthy. Yeah, I actually, I actually think um, I have a little optimism because I think the pandemic exposed 
how divided the country is. Trump exposed how divided the country is. And, you know, so many different factions who so strongly believe in whatever their, their uh, ethos is and triple down. I, I can say, like, kind of in my private conversations, everyone's kind of aligned now. Whereas two years ago, I think it was very different. And yeah. I think people are, like, aligned, like, crime's bad, clean up homelessness, uh, you know, let's learn to live with COVID. We know it's dangerous, but, like, let's yeah. learn to live, like... Those are like three basic uh, things that I think universally I see in my private conversations with friends, whether they're liberal, Republican or not. And everyone's kind of okay with having that open conversation. Like, yeah, we get some of these progressive policies, but having people robbed on Melrose isn't a good thing for society. Yeah. So I think maybe on crime, that's fine, but more people kill, more people are killed on a heart disease than any crime in this country. And yeah, if you think about what the number one cause for 18 to 45 year olds, which just broke the record was fentanyl. Yeah. Right. So, so that's you know. my point is that there's far serious issues that we're not aligned on. And so crime. Wait, wait, you don't, you don't think we're aligned on which one? Sorry. Uh, I think on health, health is far more important than fucking crime. Cause yeah. and we're not aligned on it. You're saying there's just enough people that just don't have the discipline to stay healthy. Yeah, because like how many people is affected by the by crime versus how many people are affected by bad health? Yeah, yeah. Way that's more true. people. That's and true. we're not aligned on those things. That's why we're like, and you see it in the data. Like you see if Peloton was such a thing or Apple Fitness Plus or salads or whatever, smoking, drinking's at an all-time high, vaping is at an all-time high. Fentanyl, and vaping is fentanyl, because fentanyl like directly kills people. Yeah. But like th th this is all part of that conversation. None of that stuff is constantly like we aren't. We don't think you know, about Michelle Obama is the only one I think had that initiative. She had that like for the youth to get healthy. Yeah. Remember, yeah. it was like eliminating sugars, eliminating like a lot of fit and including fitness. But you really haven't seen it since. And that because yeah. here's the problem: is like what you really have to do. Most of America doesn't have access to like healthy options at an accessible price point, right? That's the first problem. But we have access to really unhealthy food at inexpensive price points. But like you, you have to almost be like, you got to ban fucking soda or yeah. you, you, you got to be so aggressive, but you can't do that. Right. You can't change it because, and then you can't count on people having the self-discipline to eat healthy. That's not happening. We know that doesn't work. So either you make things illegal or you change or you make it like, hey, you can only put this much sugar in a soda from now on. And you can only put this much uh, blah, 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 fat into a burger or whatever, butter into a burger, whatever it is. Like there has to be some sort of guidelines because there isn't discipline as a society. And look, I'm only speaking because I, I wish more people were healthy. It will change your life. It'll change the way you think about life. But like they're just not. We're We're... You know, we're not there. Anyways, I'm done yeah. ranting. You know what? One thing we did. Um, so one of our clips on TikTok went viral around Hey Dude, because we were like, what the fuck is Hey Dude? Yeah. The shoe brand. Apparently everyone in the middle of the country wears this stuff. Yeah. And, like and, 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 and the South. And it's uh, one guy. Put it, <laughs> I'm not going to even repeat how he uh, represented the people that wore this stuff. Well, but uh, it was interesting to see. Like it, 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 this is the, this is continues to be the opportunity is that like we live, uh, and everyone, you know, the comments are like, how do you not know that? I'm like, my job is not to know what the fuck the middle of the country is doing. Like it benefit. I'm not running for president. I don't have to be in touch with reality. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't affect my life. I think what does is that there are so many opportunities in business that are just regional. And you could, you could like, Hey dude is a half billion dollar business that got bought by for two and a half billion dollars. And basically no one we know has even heard of it, let alone worn it or purchased it. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. Like the dollar store has had the biggest growth of any retailer in America in the last like kind of six to seven years. And no one we know talks about the dollar store. Yeah, exactly. So I think, so you know, and, and this goes back into my 
health and wellness thing is that like it comes down to accessibility and like the reason why hey dude works it's because it's 49 dollars and probably on sale all the time so you're probably even getting it at 29 39 dollars um um so i think that that in itself is um an interesting thing to look at is that like price matters so much. And like, when you think about where all the investments go into consumer, it always goes into like the better products that are effectively higher prices. By the way, I went to um, target like Christmas, the two days before Christmas to get something and they have their echelon bike. That's in a nice little package. that looks like a Peloton for 499 bucks. And that's versus 2000 for a Peloton? Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure the Peloton bike is nicer, but it gets the job done, right? Like, ultimately, like, what are you paying for? Like, you're paying for, sure, it's a mm, cool accessory to have in your house, but I don't know. Um, I think the point was more around there, there's a lot of interesting things constantly happening that if you're looking for an opportunity as an entrepreneur, like you could service a region and have an incredible outcome. Yep. We live in LA and New York. We're all playing a different rat race. So our, 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 our noses and our ears are paying attention to something very, very different. I mean, I know a CPG fund, I think I introduced you to them. They yeah. only focus on middle America trends. Yeah. So whether it's chewing tobacco, like a different yeah. whiskey, like yeah. it's nothing that, anyone in LA or New York consumes, but they crush yeah. it. And they, their advice was like, focus on Dallas, not Austin. Dallas yeah. has like so many bigger like markets than, you know, Austin yeah. is like considered the liberal town and you know, you can yeah. make more money if you sell to Dallas. Yeah. And I think the thing is, is just like how you view, they view the world, right? It is whiskey, tobacco, vape <laughs> pens. And so that's my point. If you're an investor around health and wellness, I think you're going to get creamed. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Like, who's still using? Who uses the Calm app? Do you know anyone that uses it? Uh, it seems like LeBron does, or is that just the ads? <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. You give me fifty million dollars, I'll be fucking meditating for ten minutes, meditating every day too. Um. All right, so we'll see. Well, you know, moving on to the metaverse, everyone's favorite topic. There's a couple. Is it of- still everyone's favorite topic, or are people over it? But no. I mean, I think like overall news, no one cares, but um, the, the the people in the metaverse care. <laughs> okay. Like those folks are still very, very much interested in what's happening there. And there's a couple interesting announcements. The first is Decentraland is holding its own fashion week. Um, so someone bought a plot of land and called it the, it's called the fashion district on Decentraland. It sold for $2.4 million. And so on March 24th through the 27th, they're calling on designers, brands, and fashionista to do a digital fashion show for the metaverse. So he, he, here's the difference. We're talking about Hey Dude on one end, that's half billion dollars and profitable. And then we're talking about this, you know, pretend fashion show in Decentraland. They're both opportunities, um, but obviously everyone, the sexy money is all going into the Decentraland fashion metaverse. You know, all of that are going to go get investments. I'm curious to see how this goes. I believe that if you don't have the marquee, marquee brands, like, if you have some random designers, no one's going to give a shit. So if you don't have like the it brands and luxury and streetwear and women's couture showing product on this kind of digital fashion experience, I think it's a tough sell. I, I don't think it does well. Yeah. But if you go get you know the right brands, it could be interesting. The p- part of the fashion week experience that like you can't recreate is like. The serendipity of who you meet and hang out with, the cocktail party, the nightclub, the the run-ins at you know hotel coasts in Paris. That yeah. shit is not happening in Decentraland. I'm yeah, sorry. you can't replace that. I was in uh, Paris, uh, I think, randomly with Amanda at one of the fashion weeks, and Nas and Gabe were hosting at a dinner, and I go to Hotel Coast, and it was literally the most famous people on the planet, and. It's like, you can't recreate that. And I was like, holy shit. 
Like this felt so big. Like, I don't know. You just have to kind of experience it to realize what goes on in those settings. And, um, and that's kind of the magic of getting all these creators together. And that's part of creating moments and fashion. Like, you can't recreate the Virgil Kanye hug and crying at that Louis Vuitton show. No, which, which was a moment. It was a yeah. moment. If you're in fashion or you're in, into pop culture, that was a very, very big moment. And I think what's going to happen is that the more and more of these decentralized things happen, and I'm sure they'll work in some capacity and people will engage in them. I think what's going to happen is there's going to be more and more exclusive shit that's going to happen because there's going to be a group of people that are like, we like this. Yeah. We like you know, like, you know, going to Yellowstone club or being a part of a member club or being a part of getting invited to an exclusive party. Like there's going to be a cohort of people, by the way, everyone's goal in goal in DeFi and NFT is get rich enough to get invited to the best shit in the world. The or real by Lambo, like the, yeah. the crypto thing is when Lambo. Yeah. So Lambo's a, uh, IRL. It's in real life. Oh, the, the, you want you want to get the Lambo, get a house in the hills, buy real estate. And yeah, then- I mean, we had Rusty on the pod what eight weeks ago. Yeah, guys in St. Moritz skiing. Yeah, that's the right. richest thing you could possibly do. Yeah, that's my point. Is like you make money no matter where, and I think the decentralized part of it is is the opportunity is for everybody. But once you make the money, you spend it in IRL. You're not yeah, spending yeah. it. Of course. Uh, the other interesting announcement is Kraken, uh, one of the big exchanges, is is building a product where they're going to lend against your NFT uh, portfolio. Love it. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I think, I think all the major exchanges are going to be forced to do this. Um, yeah. And I'm shocked it's not more widespread. Like I think Coinbase even being like the biggest in the US, I think you can only lend a hundred thousand dollars against your holdings. Yeah. It seems light. Like I- I'm surprised they don't ratchet that up. How, how much are they lending? A uh, hundred thousand. Uh, okay. You're allowed a hundred thousand to lend against. The problem is, is it's just, it's just the, it's so new. Yeah. You know, like it's going to take time. Like, it's a, such a new product. They, they want to, I mean, NFTs, as far as like mainstream culture, is not, it's like nine months old. Yeah. If that, I don't even think, of, no one cared about it until March 2020. Like, so, or March 21. So like in, you know, April of 2022, one year in, do all of these things hold weight? Yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. It's a great product. Um, the idea of lending against your NFT portfolio. If you have a big NFT portfolio, head over to Kraken and see what they're doing. Because I think and then buy Lambo. Yes, lend the, to get lend the money and lease a Lambo because a hundred grand you can't buy one. Yeah, I wonder in these exotic car markets how much is lease first buy? Right, it's all lease, right? People are Everyone's just paying leasing. three, four k a month. They're like, who cares? Yeah, exactly, because when you think about it from that perspective, oh, it's four thousand dollars a month. I, I just made. 200 grand on NFTs. I can, I'll make another 200 grand. So you, you know, you're good for it for a year. I'm sure the, the Lambo lease world is like one day Joe is driving the red Urus and then six months later he's broke. So then, you know, Mary's driving it It's it's on the same street, same apartment building. So I think we can all agree that right now, if you're really rich and you don't have children, uh, St. Bart's is the place to be. Right? And or Aspen. If you like skiing, everyone's in Aspen too. Yeah, but that's not as rich as St. Bart's, is it? I don't know. Yes, it is. Have you ever had expensive a house in Aspen is? So I, I, here's the qu- the question's not who cares. All right, name all the fucking rich places. That, that I don't want to do. Okay. I don't care. What percentage was new crypto wealth versus just like tech billionaire, uh, <laughs> legacy family, the Walmart family, you know, like all these folks. What Most. infiltrated, what infiltrated uh, rich, rich people vacation? Uh, maybe Las Vegas and Cabo. Do, do you understand like... No, you're crypto. saying the crypto folks couldn't even infiltrate St. Bart's? No. That's just booked so far in advance. Unless they I got guess, a boat. Yeah, I guess you're right. You okay, no hotel. They're not getting a hotel. All those homes are being used um, unless they are chartering a yacht 
those crypto guys. And you know why I also don't think St. Bart's is where they're going? I think crypto people are overweight. They're not going there. <laughs> Do you see Jeff Bezos walking out? Uh, off I mean, street? how is this guy that buff? Can someone tell me? What okay. the fuck is this guy? I don't, <laughs> imagine you're a crypto kid. You made $50 million this year. $100 million. You're probably overweight. Do you want to pull up in your dinky little yacht and your un, you know, shaped body next to Jeff Bezos and his the richest man in the world and he's buff? What, what is going on with that dude? How is he? He's jacked like a pro athlete. And there's a lot of people like that his age that are the. That, he's just he's unusually uh, buff for his. Age. He's probably taking HGH. Why not? Who cares? I, I mean, I guess. So then why, why, this is where I, I have, my issue is don't post your fucking cooking pancakes because you're not fucking eating them. Of course. Why not? You it's all a show. It's all a show. show. He can eat pancakes, but fuel up. <laughs> He's got Bezos. He can do anything he wants. That, he honestly looks like a, a superhero, how buff he is. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. I mean, I love it too. I wish I could look like that. Well, I'm happy for him, and I'm happy for his boat, and I'm happy for everyone in St. Bart's and Aspen and Cabo. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're um, in Florida and it's like raining. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I know. It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Gotham City. Um, so he, I'll tell you who is vacationing. It's Mark Zuckerberg, and he's in Kauai. He bought some more land over the weekend. Does he like own the whole fucking island at this point? I mean, how much land does this guy own? What's crazy is, is the more and more backlash this guy gets in Kauai, the more and more land he buys. You piss him off, he comes back for more. So you know what else? wherever he is, there's not a single soul outside of a worker within like 100 miles of him, right? I'd assume. Yeah. For amount yeah. of land he owns. Yeah. And is he, is he, what's he surfing? What's he doing? I didn't see any pictures. You know what he's doing? He's about to build the biggest metaverse company on earth next year. The sales of the Oculus VR ha- handset, dubbed the Quest 2, has become one of the hottest gifts for Christmas and was the number one most downloaded app in the App Store on Christmas Day. The return of Mark fucking Zuckerberg. He is back. Yeah, you don't, don't doubt the Zuck. I mean, as much as Congress wants to bash him as much as the public we we talked about an article i think a week ago that it's like the worst brand of the year like it doesn't matter zuck is zuck oh well, yeah and, 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 like think about uh, of all the companies left a uh, big tech he's the only founder running right exactly. it's not google it's not well, elon, elon elon but he's elon's not even big tech they're not right. bigger, he's, he's bigger than facebook tesla's value what's tesla's valuation it was a trillion dollars but no one, I mean, Tesla, I guess, is a... One trillion dollars, Tesla. That's right. bigger than Facebook. Facebook is not a trillion dollars. All right, fine. I'll concede on Elon. But Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon, Apple, not founder-driven, Tesla, yeah. Facebook are. Yeah. So here's my biggest thing on w- the reason why I think this is the most interesting is that... He- if he is the hardware for the metaverse, forget about it. This thing is fucking, this is the most undervalued fucking company on earth. Yeah, and I remember he got a lot of shit when he bought Oculus. Everyone's like, this was a bad acquisition because the first few years there was nothing going on. Yeah. This That's why good. He's too good. He, he basically said, social media, who cares? I don't care about social media anymore. I'm going in the metaverse. I'm going to change my damn company's name. And by the way, Oculus, if, uh, dude, you know what's going to happen? I saw so many people posting they had Oculus. So all the goodwill that Oculus is going to create will eventually dwarf all the hate Facebook and Instagram have. And next thing you know, it next Christmas, Oculus will be iPhone frenzy. Like it, they are creating their own universe their own metaverse. Because if you own the hardware, then yeah, you go build the app store for Oculus and then you go get the best developers in the world to go build games. I mean, I would rather bet on Oculus figuring out fitness over Peloton. Yeah, I mean, I can't tell if it's Oculus, 
But did you see LeBron post Peyton Manning wearing a VR headset training saying, I need to get one of those? Yeah. So that's pretty insane. You have LeBron and Peyton Manning posting about VR headsets. I can't, yeah. they don't say if it's Oculus, but shit, man. That's as mainstream as it gets. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to happen. And I think Facebook to me, it just looks like, and everyone says, oh, Apple's going to come with their VR headset. Where is it? I haven't seen shit. That means it's not coming next year. By mm-hmm. next year, the, 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 if, if people actually keep like, using these headsets and people like it, everyone who bought one and that I asked said they loved it. I don't know if they're going to use it again. What age are you? People our age or, young, or for kids? Both. I know, I know 40-year-olds that bought it and loved it. Said it was such a cool experience. Um, and they're like playing games or just like experiencing yeah, playing games. Yeah, playing games. So I think like assuming you you see repeat usage of it, and at the price, you know, I think it's at four hundred, and I think they did a promo for two ninety nine. That thing will you know be a hundred ninety nine, two hundred dollar or three hundred dollar item. Shit, dude, kids are gonna eat it up. And then the same bit, the name change now is looking very brilliant because. Oculus is its own brand. Meta is this new thing. Now, Facebook and Instagram are, you know, are, are whiskey and chewing tobacco. We don't really talk about that. Yeah. But by the way, they're going to shit cash for the next 30 years um, while we invest in developing fucking hardware for the metaverse. Yeah. Amazing. There, there needs to be an on-ramp to the metaverse. You can't just join the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. Well, right now, you there's nothing happening in the metaverse. Yeah. There's no one there. No one's hanging out. Um, Do you think Zuck posts an obnoxious sunscreen photo just to piss everyone off? Uh, I think Zuck, if he's playing the billionaire game, he has to do something physical. He has so, to get a little buffer, right? Wasn't he throwing, doing like archery or something a year ago? Or two? Yeah, he's throwing like, like an axe? When he was on the electric surfboard, that was like a physical feat that people are like, okay, as a billionaire, you now have to do something physical. It's not good enough. Your wealth is not good enough. Yeah. Like, where is Elon Musk's shirtless pic? Where is it? I haven't seen it. <laughs> so I think he's actually working. Well, Bezos doesn't have to work anymore. Well, I mean, you have to be rich and buff now. Warren Buffett. <laughs> Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think him and his... Uh, uh, Diet. What did you drink? A cherry Coke every day with or McDonald's? Yeah, Dr. Pepper or something like that. Yeah. I think it's the full sugar one. I don't even think he does the diet. Yeah. I mean, he's a big Coca Cola investor. So, yeah. Um, we'll see. But yeah, I think, I think, uh, what Zuckerberg's doing with Meta, I mean, I don't know. The fact that Oculus was the number one app on the App Store yeah, on Christmas crazy. Day, that is, that means crazy. that many people fucking got it for Christmas and went and downloaded it. Yeah, and everyone thought this holiday season would have been crypto, like NFTs, yeah. crypto, and Zuckerberg sneaks in. <laughs> <laughs> He's unstoppable. Yeah. That guy is unstoppable. I mean, as much as we've criticized and everyone criticizes, the guy is a freaking beast. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty hot. Um, well, moving on. Um, I mean, WhatsApp's still a top 10 app. Like, who doesn't have WhatsApp at this point? Who needs to download WhatsApp? I mean, I guess it's just new kids. And Instagram. There's 2 billion people that use Instagram. Who's downloading Instagram? Well, there's someone turning, like, 14 or 16 every day. They got to download it. I guess. As soon as you get your your brand new phone when you're a teenager, what do you go? You go get the gram? You go Even get WhatsApp? Like Gmail. Like, who doesn't have a Gmail? New people. There's new people coming every day. Oh, that's great. Um, here's a number that's just staggering. There's $900 billion of cash on the sidelines waiting to invest in everything from private equity growth, general venture, SPACs, early stage venture, and late stage venture. $900 billion. Mm-hmm. That's insane. That means venture and you know, private companies, this, this kind of ride is not stopping anytime soon. Yeah. I think 
there's just a surplus of capital across all investor bases. And it's like no secret, right? Like Tiger Global invested seven billion in six months, and then they raised fifteen billion, and they'll they'll invest that. That's so you said nine hundred billion. There's thirty one billion off, or twenty one billion off one fund. Yeah, and you know, in Jason Horowitz, I think between all their funds, between crypto and venture, it's over eight nine billion that they've raised in the last eighteen months. So makes sense. Everything. So, I mean, the. They're saying that, like, um, in the third quarter of 2021, there was 160 billion dollars invested in in third, venture. Third quarter of 2021. Yeah, that's insane. So if you think about that, you said 100 and what? Uh, 30 billion. No, 160 billion. Sorry. Okay, so think about like five percent of that was one fund, Tiger. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, think about anyone in the investing space since we spend, we spend time in this space. Like how many times do we hear about a fund that's like, Oh, $2 billion of capital. You've never heard of them. Literally Every, day. Never heard of them. <laughs> Every day I'll have a phone call with someone <laughs> and I'll be like, Oh yeah, we have a $500 million opportunity fund. And I was like, what? I never heard of you. Yeah. I have $500 million. $500 million. I'm talking, there's people with billions yeah. And family offices that have so much capital that no one's ever heard of. I think the most shocking thing that I've learned in the last, more in the last like five years, is how many rich people there are that no one's ever heard of. Yeah. The, the hey dudes of rich people. Yeah. There's a lot of hey dudes. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And so, I mean, it, it, I think, you know, if, let's assume 500 billion ended up getting invested in 2021, maybe a little bit less when it was all said. I'm sure Q4 is slower. Um, you have 900 billion sitting in cash now. More funds are going to go get raised. Yeah. I mean, to invest 500 billion, it, you could easily have another 2021, four or 500 billion dollars deployed. Um, I think probably valuations are going to come down. No, but see, I, that's where, you know, I, I think there's a misconception that people think the party's over because when you look at the market dynamics, you have that much capital that has to get deployed. So if you think about what's the incentive of a fund is to deploy it pretty much as quickly as possible because it yeah. takes seven to 10 years to even realize any of those gains. So they make so much on the management fees and then they redeploy as quickly as possible. So that just means things are just going to continue to get bid up. And I think interest rates going up, all that, like that's already been priced in. And when you have that quantum of capital sitting on the sidelines, like it's really tough for me to believe there's this like great correction near term. Uh, yeah, probably that, that sounds right. I, I don't, I don't think people feel like, like I, even if you saw a 20% correction, which is a, that's a real correction. We already saw that in growth stocks. Yeah. And no one's, yeah. no one's shy of investing in growth stocks. Everyone's like, Oh, time to buy in. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. In some of these cases, like Moderna is down 50% from its high 50%. Right. Twilio down almost 50%, like 40%. A lot of these companies, these are incredible companies that are got, you know, chin checked over the last kind of 90 days. So yeah, I agree. I, I don't think the party, the other thing about that $900 billion, a lot of that money is now going to go to the public market. If the deals are better there, they'll just go there. Yeah. Party's not stopping. Yeah. Who wants I, to party then? There are, there's always, there's co- cops who want parties then. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I agree. I don't think the party's ending anytime soon and would love to see it continue for a very long time. This is good for all of us. Everyone enjoys a good party. I'll tell you, uh, whose party might be stopping. It's Nordstrom Rack. Nordstrom has hired consulting firm Alix Partner to explore a spinoff of its off-priced rack business because it's not doing well. How the fuck is Nordstrom Rack not doing well? I cannot, I just don't get this at all. Like every other off-price retailer is on absolute fire and and have found a way to like 
figure out supply chain and figure out brand mix. Uh, Nordstrom, you know, is is struggling. So it's, you know, it's, it's probably going to get sold and some private equity companies are going to come clean it up. And Nordstrom Rack is a very valuable brand. I'm shocked that it's not doing well. Is it because Nordstrom Core is Nordstrom Rack now? In terms of what? Because they like, have the discount? So I, one of the challenges with Nordstrom and Nordstrom Rack, what I don't think they've done a great job of doing is like building out the merchandising mix for Nordstrom Rack for people to have a distinct reason to go there versus going to Nordstrom. So Nordstrom core business seems to be doing okay and hanging up because it's gone higher end and it's got more luxury and it's footwear department is like incredible. And, and they found like a reason to go to Nordstrom, which that reason had been gone for a while. And they, they figured out like, Hey, we have, we, we can figure this out and be more relevant. When you go to the Nordstrom rack, it doesn't feel relevant. Yeah. The brands, the merchandising mix, like it's like the same shit from like five years ago. They're still selling a discount like Ben Sherman or, penguin on the men's side like no one wants that like where is the luxury brand at a discount and what's interesting is if you look at the luxury space century 21 which was the premier um kind of luxury operator in the uh discount off price space in new york city in that that region they're gone they're bankrupt um sacks off fifth i don't know how that business is doing there's Neiman Marcus's last call. So, I mean, there's there needs to be like a hip, young version of designer off price that doesn't exist at brick and mortar at scale. And I thought Nordstrom Rack could be that. So Nordstrom Rack has 352 stores. Doesn't Nordstrom Core only have like 100? Yeah, probably. So It's a huge business. But why would they do the signaling like our business sucks, we want to sell it? Like, doesn't that just drive your value down? Don't you want to hoodwink some investors to yeah. buy it for a premium? Yeah. Like, who, who comes from a position like, hey, we have this shitty asset we're trying to get rid of? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know their strategy. I don't know how PR works at the Nordstrom <laughs> family, but uh, I think it's a great asset. I think someone should buy, someone who understands merchandising and brand mix for the younger, like the Gen Z consumer should come in and build what a younger version of an off-price retailer looks like. So in 2019, Nordstrom Rack did $5 billion. I mean, what's the Nordstrom stock trading at? AWN, let's see. Market cap is $3.53 billion. Wow. Wild. That doesn't make sense. Probably his debt and... It's insane, right? Yeah. Right. Maybe to maybe it's time to pile in the Nordstrom. And still, it seems like it's still run by the family, even though it's a publicly traded company. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I hope they didn't use uh, Klarna at checkout at Nordstrom because then they'll have a hard time uh, collecting. This is nuts. Uh, there is now. Uh, kind of there's people now looking into the buy now pay laters. Yep. And um, one of the things that uh, is now kind of revealing itself is that uh, it, it, there was a survey done by uh, nerd wallet uh, regarding Gen Z and their use of, uh, you know, the buy now pay later option. Yep. 43% said they missed at least one buy now, pay later payment this past year compared to just 31% of millennials. That's in October. So that's purely a function of no stimulus, right? Yeah. No stimulus, no more delaying of paying rents, all that yeah. stuff. People yeah. are missing payments. So, But doesn't that just crush like a Sheehan? Isn't their whole business buy now, pay later? Um... Sure. A lot of fast fashion? I mean, that's everybody, right? Like every site has buy now, pay later right now. And I think if you're a buy now, pay later for younger people, but he, here's the real problem is that like, I'm seeing a lot of consumer protection agencies saying, you know, buy now, pay later is now predatory to young people because 
your your credit is going to get fucked up. You keep missing these payments. Yeah. And so if you think about right now, the Klarna's and the whoever can stomach it because they have so much cash on the balance sheet and they may subsidize it and continue to, you know, figure this out. But at scale, like much larger scale, this is kind of scary. Yeah, I mean, this is just another form of debt, right? Buy now, pay later is no different than credit card debt or any debt that you own as an individual. So I have to believe that they saw the boom because of the stimulus and now they're seeing the crash because there's no more stimulus and people actually have to pay for where they live and, you know. Yeah, and I think it just has to be regulated, right? Because like if we start, uh, it's unclear that I don't know the credit uh, score implication of missing a buy now pay later um, payment. Um, so I'd love to know what that is, and then uh, really understanding um, how does um, how does the federal government and consumer protection agencies how do they monitor these things because like you almost have to cap how much people get on buy now pay letter, like similar to a credit card. Like you, you, you could potentially go spend $5,000 on one day on 40 sites, buy now pay later. And that's it. You're toast. Yeah. And I think every, uh, all these new age tech products live on buy now pay later. Peloton's a buy now pay later. Tonal's a buy now pay later. Mirror's yeah. a buy now pay later. Like no, I mean, I would love to know the data on of the Peloton that's twenty one hundred. How many are doing zero percent interest versus yeah. paying up front? Why would you pay up front? Yeah. Um, Restaurants. Yeah, exactly. how, how rare is all buy now pay later? I mean, yeah, and I think uh, I think it's going to be soon. Buy now, pay never. <laughs> That's going to be the, the new product. Klarna's new product, buy now, pay ne- never. You uh, sign up using a fake identity and you just fucking disappear with whatever you want. There you go. Um, but man, this, this, I think this Christmas with Gen Z and buy now, pay later, think about it. Young people also are not working, right? No. Nope. Like they're not going and getting that mall job and they're not, you know, doing those things. So it's not like you see it happen and then you went and splurged during the holidays and you're like, oh, I'll get a job or oh, I'll do, I'll figure it out later. I don't know. Pretty, pretty scary to the buy now, pay later thing, specifically for young people, really, really um, is a scary situation. Yeah. Don't, don't get in the debt. Yeah. It's not a good place to be. Not. I've been there. You don't like it. Mm -hmm. Um, So. Something that's equally scary is COVID is spreading everywhere. And you know what it's ruining? College freaking football bowl games. Yeah. Three bowl games canceled in two days. I was talking to my friend Michael just now. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, I'm in San Diego at the Holiday Bowl. It just got canceled. Canceled. Yeah, UCLA. Arizona Bowl. Canceled. Um. It's, it's, it's quite interesting, specifically in football, where we talked about like these people are putting literally their lives in danger playing this sport. No, they're putting their livelihood every single day. Yeah. Livelihood meaning you might get a concussion, you're cutting your uh, lifespan short, you're yeah. not going to be able to walk when you're 35. Yeah. And we will never cancel a game because of that. But seemingly what appears to be a really bad flu, we're willing to cancel all the games for. Yeah. I mean, objectively, football has no basis of canceling anything for anything. Because we, yeah. we don't care about the health and wellness of these players. And fans have agreed to that kind of agreement. And yeah. players have. So it's, Yeah, it's just an unsaid thing. We're, we're, we all love what we do. We enjoy it. Players love it. They enjoy it. Coaches love it. The fans love it. Let the show continue. I don't see why we're canceling games. Um, I think the bigger threat to this whole situation is um, Disney, which owns ESPN. College football bowl season is huge, huge moneymaker. 
Yeah. And they've sold hundreds of millions. They've sold nearly $400 million of ads. And I can't imagine like, okay, you bought ads for holiday bowl. Yep. Yeah. I mean, how do you make that up to the advertiser? Like, you can make it up next year. Like, there's just not enough properties on television for ESPN to give people, you know, like NFL is on a different price range. Yep. You're not getting that. So I'll be interested. I'm so, I'm so shocked that they canceled it and didn't reschedule it. Yeah. Why, like, why not put it in a week from now? Yeah. So the entire UCLA football team was at SeaWorld two days ago. And they got decimated by COVID. They're at SeaWorld. Isn't SeaWorld outside too? Yeah. Why the fuck <laughs> would anyone from UCLA football team want to go to SeaWorld? No, it's part of like the promotion for the game. They make them do that shit. Okay, well, I mean, come on. You knew this shit was going on. That's so stupid. Now SeaWorld, who maybe sponsors the freaking bull or whatever, like you got nothing because you had to go we had to go see stupid dolphins. You know who's not canceling? The fucking BCS. I guarantee yeah. you. I guarantee you they stopped testing. Yeah, you're not testing anyone from Alabama, Cincinnati, Michigan, or what's the no other No fucking chance. No yeah. chance. They're, that's billions, right? BCS yeah. is billions. This is yeah. millions, right? It's a different game. Yeah. Nothing's getting canceled. Bryce Young's not getting tested. Let me guarantee you that. No. And then I think it's interesting in the NFL, like, you know, it's funny on Mondays and Tuesdays, all the COVID, it's, you know, like well, God knows when these people tested positive, but they need them through the game. And then, oh, by the way, we won the most critical game. And sorry, you're going to sit out this week. Yeah. NFL has already gotten sneaky. It's the random testing. Yeah. So like, we know Patrick Mahomes isn't getting tested. We know Tom Brady is it's done. They're not getting yeah. tested the rest of the year. None of no. these guys. But the CDC did say that, um, that, the isolation quarantine is now only five days, right? Yes. Five days versus 10. Yeah. Which is a big deal. That's a big deal because the CD, but the CDC has lost so much trust. Like you, you see the right wing. They're like, of course the CDC is saying this now. Like, you know, yeah. well, if the CDC is saying five days, it's probably like three then. It's probably two. Yeah. Which is wild. Yeah. Um, well, we'll have to see. It's, it's look, we're going into New Year's. Um, we know a lot of people personally that have gotten it over the last, call it, I don't know, 10 days. So it's gone through a lot of people. But you know, let's, let's know. All the people we know, some got a little sicker than most, but no one had to go to the hospital. Yeah. No one has been to the hospital that we know of. Um, everyone has said, uh, for the most part, they said it, it hit, hit them pretty good like flu-like symptoms. Some people have said it was sniffles and moved on and no one in their family got it. It depends like who you talk to, but. And these are right. all vaccinated folks that got it. That, yeah, I know, some, I know some unvaxxed people. No, but I'm saying that's probably the reason they uh, didn't have like anything crazy. Yeah, exactly. So it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next kind of week because New Year's will be the big, next big test is that obviously everyone's going to go on with their uh, go on with their New Year's Eve plans. Um, some people have canceled. A lot of flights being canceled all over the country. So are the flights being canceled because the crews can't yeah. participate? Is that why? Yeah, because the cr crew's testing positive. Okay. Which I get. I mean, from an airline standpoint, why do you want the liability of sending a, you know, you know, infected worker? It's not like it's a football game. Yeah. Like these people, you know, Obviously, they're there to help people. I, I, I personally out. don't know many people who had plans that canceled plans. I, I, don't, I agree with that. I think, uh, I think people's plans may get canceled because of travel. Yeah, they're forced uh, to be canceled, you're saying. Yeah, I think that'll happen. And I think people are, will also, um, uh, you know, the funny thing is, I think our friend was saying is like, when can we start living? Everyone's living. No one has stopped living. Like most people have moved on with their life and doing whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. So look, at the end of the day, everyone should make their own decision on what's best. And the same way if you choose to eat a cheeseburger, smoke a cigarette and have a beer is the same thing, the same way you should operate when it comes to COVID. Like if you're okay doing those things, 
Why would you cancel your plans now? Yeah. Oh. I think I think people don't want to live with COVID being a bad word is what the sentiment is. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's also more a California thing where everyone's like scared and like we're scared of our shadows here. Yeah. Like, like, like we had a friend in Texas who said there's no such thing as COVID. But yeah, I mean like no one's they're not even talking about it. Yeah. Just don't you just you just your life is just what it is. It's normal. And if you get it, you get sick, you stay home and whatever. In a few days you're better. And I probably think, not even staying home. Yeah, probably not. Um, but you know, we'll see. So, you know, everyone do what's best for yourself. If you want to stay safe, stay safe. I don't want to get it, so I'm taking more precaution on masks and things like that. We got some, we got a bunch of at home tests if anyone has any symptoms. Um, uh, but I'm also, I was, I'm going out to dinners. I'm just hanging out with friends. I'm still living my life. I'm just doing it a little more cautiously. Yeah. That's my decision. Yeah. Uh, when do you think we got it? We can stop talking about it. I mean, you can stop talking about it right now. Don't talk about it. <laughs> I don't even know why we bring it up. Who, <laughs> like we shouldn't be talking about it. Yeah. Tim, edit this whole thing out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we have. Um, thank you for joining us. Maybe you're at work. I'm still at work this week. Um, maybe you are on vacation. Uh, we will be back for a special end of the year episode on Thursday and uh, lead you into the brand new year. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Go for a run outside if you live in a climate that allows you to do so. And we'll see you Thursday.